That's just crazy, man. I got classics. <laughs> For sure. Oh, word. What For it do, sure. y'all? Up here in the Sound Cathedral with my boy, my brother, my friend, DJ Menville, your girl's favorite DJ. It's the one and only, the anomaly that exists, the rarity that is, Nashville's finest, Brian Brown. Uh... Here at WNXP 91.1, and uh, we're gonna do a little couple tunes for y'all, that's okay. So uh, let's get it, man. Ooh, two minute drill out now. If you ain't know now, you better go get to them streaming services. This is uh, NBA Jam, watch me get on fire real quick. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I went worldwide from the land of strip, and they ain't even took off yet. What a trip. Had a few slips, made me get a grip. I need the cash now, I ain't hearing shit. Where the world going, I might cop a zip. Smoke the whole bag in like one city. Suicide bombers in my own city. Fuck, I ain't really look too suspicious. On this shit for certain, I don't know nothing. But I'm pretty sure that they up to something. Least I can do, keep you aware. Night is dark and full of tears of wealth. Niggas is hoes, bitches is plot, and government lazy. Why they won't off me? Both losing jobs, ain't been outside. People still trying to keep up with the side. Fuck wrong with these folk, man. These niggas crazy. Never really understood anybody faking to make it. I talked it up, stood firm, and since BD was in Golden State before Stephen Clay, it was Matt and Monte. I believe it never went astray. So fuck what any nigga gotta say. Run shit like TMC, even when a nigga took the heart away. Chris Mullin with this rap shit, all around game, not a flaw in sight. Niggas think it's sweet based off what they seem. Shit, well, let them try. That day I do not advise. <laughs> Y'all think we just guitar boy with cowboy boots and gallon hats and shit. Y'all got me fucked up. Let's have some more fun, man. Yeah. All right, so if you're rocking with me, just bounce. And if you're feeling good, roll up, bounce. And if you like what you hear, let me hear you holler out like, please do not mind me. I just up the prices. All them hoes excited. I'm Gucci, so icy. Heart got cold and I don't like it, just the way it goes though Tell me is you riding, and pretty please keep it true or shawty You want a roll coast to coast, need a thriller sun and sounds nice and all But if I may beg your pardon, what the hell you thought this was my dear? Well, I could do some vacations, if you gon' be a mainstay Bet on me when the parlay could be worth billions someday But we no talking cheap, right? And ain't no stopping me, no Tell me how'd you get here? You think you never cocks, huh? Bunch it like the Greyhound if you bout it, bout it At the crib being a bad bitch with your friends shouting out I tried that look thing for the last time It's the same when you cross my mind and so you know do not mind me, I just up the prices All them hoes excited, I'm Gucci, so icy Heart got cold and trust, I don't like it That's the way it goes, though Tell me, is you riding? Yeah, and what not? BB Booker, Nashville Sun, this that heat ride From the country with that swine cowboy B5 Yeah, 615, you know it don't stop, nuh-uh Oh, we gonna go right to it just like that? Damn, bro! Let's get angry! Let's get excited! Crash let's get turned up! Crash hey, go! Go, go, Daddy! I'm running wild on down. you! Crash hey, so I need all that you get! Come up off that already! Focus, starving, and poverty! How you not here? I'm belly! Mama working late again, I'm tired of eating spaghetti! Ain't no killer, but don't push me, take it there if you let me! My wrist on Bobby Drake, make sure it comes with the interest I'm a diamond in the rough, but what the fuck is some pressure? On that street called Meridian, some don't get past the median But I hold it down for every one of them till we beat again That's why I talk the way I talk, they don't make them like me no more Matter of fact, what Wayne said, they ain't never made them like me before I'm rare, like Mr. Clean with hair Man, this shit swangin' through, I hope she hit that hoe in there I swear, wax on, wax off, kickin' shit like me, I get Otherworldly, I done hit God body. I lit the block on fire and got right back to the mission. Me drop top everything like we ain't got no sillies. Riding around with one of my dogs, he ain't got much of a purpose. But stay with that killer and that white girl like Jamie Lee Curtis. It gets spooky on my block. My third cousin can tell you, so we need money, cars, clothes, hoes, etc. etc. When it comes to this shit here, you ain't gon' find too many better. Brian Brown, best rapper alive, who do it better? But you boys can never, ever, 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 never, ever, never, ever, 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 not at all. I wish y'all 
I could, but it ain't that easy. Peace out, keep it breezy. Hey, yeah. You did. You are listening to 91.1 WNXP. Marquise Munson here inside the Sonic Cathedral, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Brian Brown. How's it going, man? It's going pretty well, my friend. How yeah, are you? Good, sir. Thank we, you. We always show me, love when we, when we see each other. Absolutely, we do, man. But um, so I'm going to go back to a show, Brooklyn Bowl. And Ooh. legendary Scarface, which <laughs> you had the opportunity to open up for. And I remember when the show was over, everybody was still kind of kicking it around. And you were by like the merch yeah. and had a chance to just hang out with Scarface. So for that moment, like how surreal was that? You know, growing up in the South, obviously, you know, Scarface is a legend. And so being able to share a stage with them and then be able to talk to them afterwards, like, how surreal was that moment for you? Well, inter interestingly enough, when I was back there, I was actually talking to this merch guy. I can't remember the dude's name to save my life, but I was trying to just get any game and intel that I could from him about, you know, ways to to sell merch, what's gonna grab their attention, this, that, and the third. Just little tidbits of info I can get from that. But funny enough, I had told Carl's when that show got announced, I'm like, bro, we have to find a way to open that. And lo and behold, I wanna say I'm sure we did some reaching out, but Brooklyn Bowl reached back out to us. We got there. We was actually we was first to uh sound check. You was late, Scarface. I ain't go I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna hold you account for that. You was late, but it's all good though. You, when you're Brad Jordan, I guess you can be late. So uh nah, it was beautiful, man. He's a jokester, hilarious dude. DJ skills is very like I was surprised by how good he was at DJ. A terrible bowler. He sounded a terrible bowler, but even still though, it was it was monumental because he talking about one of the pillars of not only Southern hip hop, but just hip hop in general. And I get the opportunity to, you know, kind of what he what he was doing back in his day, just kind of being honest about his world and his surroundings, where he was coming from. I get to do that in my hometown in front of a crowd that probably, you know, was a lot of Nashville hometown folk, but hadn't necessarily gone back into maybe Nashville hip hop and been like, wait, who's who's this kid or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And technically I'm not necessarily a kid. Like I'm probably a lot closer than that age than they would probably even assume. But just to kind of bridge that gap for one night was very, very nice. Yeah, absolutely. And you've opened up for some big people from, you know, Girl Talk to, you know, Freddie Gibbs, but recently you did a show at Dark Matter and you celebrated the three year anniversary of your album Journey, yeah. which is to me like your life story and your experiences, you know, growing up here in Nashville. So I wanted to know what that moment was like for you, like celebrating a three year anniversary of this debut project that meant a lot to you. It was nerve wracking. <laughs> it was nerve wracking because the weather like just came out of nowhere and got cold and really mystifying and and and, sh and like dangerous essentially for a lot of folks. So I'm thinking, okay, bro, I got to pay these artists, I got to pay these instrumentalists. Don't don't do me like this. We still wound up situated to straight, you know. And unfortunately, when I should be thinking about nothing but the artistry, because I am independent and been doing it like this for almost 10 years now, I can't help but think of like, okay, logistics, this, that, and the third. Like, I still ain't really had a time to relish in it. I've watched the show a few times, and shout out to us live streaming it and such like that. I've watched it a few times since, but man, I still ain't even had the time to think about like, dog, you know, journey drop. COVID 2020 happens. I, everything's just been go, go, go ever since. So it was for a good little moment when I was in the performance aspect of it to stop and see a couple people just knowing songs from Journey and even prior to Journey, word for word, I'm like, oh, shit. People actually like, like, now not to say that they didn't, but wow, like this is a thing here, you know? And, and I'm just honored to be um, gifted and blessed like I am, but it's also a privilege to know that certain moments like that just allow you to understand that you're doing the right thing, regardless of how doubtful you may get about it or unsure, despite life's you know ups and downs and challenges. And um, that night was that night was special. It really was, despite all the time of the weather and leading up to it and assembling the band like two or three weeks prior to it. It was, it was a lot, but it just showed me a lot. I learned a lot, and now. I was like, okay, that's a room with 150. Let's see how we can do it with a room 350, 550, 750, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to ask you this because, you know, obviously we're here in Nashville and, 
you know, when you get to genres outside of country music, it feels like a lot of artists feel like they have to leave in order to find, you know, their success. And everybody has a different journey. Everybody has a different story. Touche. Yeah, but for you, yeah, touche. But for you, you know, being from here and still champion like being here and being in this music scene, what has inspired you to stay to Nash in Nashville instead of, you know, what normal people do in hip hop, they try to go to Atlanta, but you stayed here. Well, funny enough, I left for like a tad bit of a second. Um, I dropped my first EP, 722, which won Nashville scene's best mixtape of the year that year. Shout out to the scene. I, I fuck with y'all. Y'all always holding it down. Uh, I won in 2014 and... Around that time, I ain't gonna lie, I was feeling myself, and at that moment, I felt like the local hometown circuit of shows that meant a lot, I had already knocked out and accomplished, but also, too, for some reason, I was kind of wanting to like branch out and work with new producers amongst the town, but for some reason, at that time to me, it just felt like the camaraderie and the... And the way that we should have been gelling just wasn't happening that way. And so that's when I moved to Chattanooga. I linked up with K-Tobin. and I linked up with the fellas at the house and such. And just wanted to expand on my sound and get new producers and new challenges and people that, like, take me out of my element. But what had happened within that time of Chattanooga from probably about 15 to fall of 16, and I'm from there, I moved from there to Atlanta from fall of 16 to about, summer 17 what had happened was i'm realizing that chat is like in the early stages of gentrification so all that stuff i learned in high school was starting to make sense now i see chattanooga i'm like oh this is nashville at that time 2014 2015 this is nashville the past let's say since the recession hit up until that point and atlanta is like oh this is where nashville's headed so when i moved back it gave me a perfect sense of like okay this is where I'm from. Chattanooga, two mile, two hours away, is what the place used to feel like. Real quiet. It's it's home. It's home. And Atlanta is like where we're headed. And it allowed me to kind of be able at that time and up until I finished journey to look at Nashville around me and be like, okay, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. I want to talk about it, but how do I talk about it? And those experiences and everything in between and then coming back, it's like, ah, okay, it all makes sense now. So um, to be back here and still be proud about it, I mean, you see how this city's changing every single day. So I hate that whole, like, unicorn term about us Nashville natives and residents, but hell, I mean, if we got the magic to keep the hope alive and really show what this sound is really about, you know, then hell, I got to do what I got to do, honestly. Yeah, it's a journey. Yeah, for sure. And I've appreciated every step and every moment of the way, despite circumstances, despite situations that more times than not would deter somebody from even keeping going. Yeah, what does success look like for you? What does success look like for Brian Brown? <sighs> to be able to do these type of things 24-7, 365. Like if I leave here, instead of me worried about clocking in, I need to go clock into the studio. You know what I'm saying? Or if I'm leaving here, it's like who, who else do we need a meeting with? Where's the collabor collaborative uh, efforts with certain brands and partnerships and such? And slowly but surely, my life is becoming that. You know, I just actually landed a placement on All-American. What up, CW? Shout out to y'all. Sort of noise. Thank Thank you. So, you know, everything is starting to make sense and is and is and is percolating the way that I've always wanted it to. I just needed to happen more consistently so that I can sit back and recline and just be the creative, be the artist, be the motivational speaker, be the shit talker, be whatever I'd like to be. But also when I need to be present in these rooms, when I need to do these type of moments and situations, my mind is clear enough and I'm focused enough to, you know, I won't say separate the two, but like we're in interview mode. When I get out of here, it might be business meeting. Let's get the recording mode. You know what I'm saying? You always just got to be prepared for any and all situations. And so slowly but surely, I'm getting comfortable with understanding that I am more than just an artist. I am a business. I'm an entity. And then also with that, applying whatever lessons I've learned past, present, and even now in this moment to make sure that I'm always on my toes and ready to go. So let's make it happen consistently. Let's manifest something real quick. Word. All right. Dream collaboration. It can be Nashville artist it can be national dream me and alchemist mm, an alchemist brian, brian me and Rickers. me and alchemist i just need like eight like we can work on as many as we need to but i just need like 
eight of those. Alchemist, I know you don't necessarily. Well, I won't say you don't rock with folk from the south, but if you had to get a hold of this, I got something for you for sure. I Alchemist. mean, look, any beats you didn't use for Larry June, just, Come on, just throw them man. over here. <laughs> the Bodie the outtakes, whatever the, the Vince outtakes, the, these things are ours. Like, I need all of them, man. Just just holler at me. I, I Trust me, I got you. So, yeah. All right, finally, Brian Brown. You know, you just dropped the EP, you know, Two Minute Drill. You released your song, Better Days, which you talked about with the you know, All-American series on the CW. Yeah. What does the rest of 2023 look like for you? Uh, my guy, Carmine Prophets, and I are collectively working on a project as we speak. Wink, wink, guys. Uh, me and Bandplay done tapped in. So if you hear some Brian Brown Bandplay joints over the summer, don't be surprised. Um, there's this kid, Provita, out of Texas. He produced Icy, and he produced uh, R.I.P. Limelight from my Vanity Pack EP. We're working on a collaborative project called Ha, You Thought. I was going to give you that, not just shit. Um, whoever's willing to work, me and Topper Atwood been in the studio like crazy laddie. And that's another thing, too, that's so cool about who I've been working with. Like, besides Vita... All the producers and people I've been working with, they all from Tennessee, all from Nashville of some sorts, you know? So unintentionally, yet intentionally, I do my best to make sure that they understand, like, we have a sound here. We have a we have a, a wimp in the trunk here. We got all that. So I'm just doing my best to expand and collaborate with people that, I guess, either wouldn't expect it or they're giving me a soundscape and a canvas that they're like, no way Brown could, you know, paint a beautiful picture of that. But it's like, that's what you thought wrong. I'm only getting started with, you know, expanding on colors and ideas and visions and such like that so a pretty a lot a lot on the way a lot a lot a lot on the way i call it this year my vengeance tour I, I need it back i won't say in blood but i just need it all back you know I, I tell people all the time the nashville hip-hop scene is emerging and there's a bunch of talented artists here and you're one of them and yeah. i appreciate you stopping by the sonic cathedral i appreciate you rocking with us. Here. this is this is clean i mean next time i need to be doing a show i'm gonna be real with you but we can we can write that out i'm sure <laughs> we can work that out thanks man I thank you for it. having me bro appreciate it yes sir